All right. All right. Welcome to the Hard Yarns. We're going to jump straight into this episode. Ha <laughs> ha. Classic pun. <laughs> yeah. We are joined by world champion and future gold medalist times two, Nana Kennedy. Mm. Uh, but before we do that, we are going to let you guys know that the Patreon is up and running. If you want to hear this episode without ads, yes, jump on the Patreon. Yep. If you want extra bonus episodes, there's about 40 on there now. Yeah. So jump on. And I'm going to chuck them up as audio. So audio when I chuck only. them up on YouTube, people will complain about them. Yep. They have to like watch it to listen. So yep. I'll be chucking out as an audio. If you're new and you don't know what Patreon means, it's like OnlyFans for podcasts, mm. but less dick. And we put up more uh, more content. Did you put up a heap of stuff for the golf day, the stitching time stuff? Yeah, just as you go, like behind the scenes yeah, stuff. Yeah, cool. So um, to, cl- to find it, click the link in the bio and it will bring you to Patreon. <laughs> for five bucks a month, you get to support us. Love that. we'll support you. Uh, this episode is brought to you by All Trades Cover, as you can see Woo. behind our lovely guests there. Um, the All Trades Cover is, uh, you know... A, an insurance company that sponsors you, well, sponsors you, uh, gets behind you when you have a maybe an incident on site. Yeah. Uh, if you're a tradie, if, if small you, tradie, big, big yeah. business, small business. If you use pole vaults and, you know, your pole vault breaks. <sighs> I don't know if they cover that, but you need to check. Good. <laughs> not using the <laughs> inquire with alltradescover.com.au. Uh, yeah, they're and great. They look you after you. Uh, also brought to you by Vibe Culture. Yeah. Vibe Culture is a... Well, vibing today. Yeah, it's a, a like supplement that's got plenty of amino acids. Uh, it's got electrolytes. It's Olympic and, approved probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're not trialling it with our Olympic guests. But they, they, no, we're not. <laughs> but they try, uh, they say it's best for you uh, after a hangover. Yeah. Gets you feeling good. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll put it to the test. Yes. It does help me feel more awake. Since they've been a sponsor, I haven't drank once. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't even been able I to only, test it. I only drank because I were a sponsor. Uh, I ended up getting kicked out of Ocean, so Vibe Culture didn't really help <laughs> um, <laughs> at that point, but it's because I hadn't had it before. Okay. And, and final sponsor th- shout out is uh, Kahuna Golf. Kahuna Golf. So if you like playing golf and well, you like looking good. And we did on Friday yeah, for Stitch in Time. time. Yeah. Uh, we looked great. Mm. My golf... Did not match my look. No, our partners were pretty good. They uh, they played well, but they didn't look as good as us. Yeah, because we were wearing Kahuna golf. So if you want to check apparel. it out, have a look on our Instagram uh, story um, or our posts. But uh, you get a discount, and the code is Hard Yarns fifteen. Mm. Yeah. Aside from that, Woo. today's guest, world champion, yep. Olympian, gold Commonwealth me- Games gold medalist. 2024 gold medalist. Yeah. Uh, Nina Kennedy joined us. Um, outstanding episode. Uh, yeah. Really enjoyed it. So thanks so much for joining us. Do you remember yeah. what we talked about at all? Am I moment meant to give like a little runner? recap? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be a run up and a whatever. <laughs> yeah. What did we talk about? Just a bit of my story, how I got into it, and then but it's challenges, how mm-hmm. I overcame that and kind of how I took that, you know, to the next level. Yeah. And yeah. Really, really, really interesting way of a flipping mindset resulting in excellent uh, results. Uh, we always love the old mindset and the mental health stuff. Yeah. So very, very good, good episode. But yeah, really cool to listen um, to an Olympic athlete and what it takes uh, to get there. Fuck so yeah. Enjoy the episode. Mm-hmm. Um, let's get... Vaulted. <laughs> Let's get hard. <laughs> Welcome to Hard Yarns Podcast. I am fucking fat. <laughs> <laughs> Anything Chris White says, please <laughs> disregard it. 5D is actually a state of being. It's a unity consciousness. That was Hard Yarns with me, Frankie Rose. So I'm going to throw it over to your co-host. Daniel Adelby. And Cameron Brand. I would do this and then I'd gong. <laughs> Free in attendance. For the millions listening at home. <laughs> Let's get hard. <laughs> yeah, so that's all good. We sort of But cool. thanks so much for joining us. Um, appreciate you coming on. Uh, you, you finished your training today? Is that what you've done? I've had a rest day today. So nice. Uh, I've just rolled in here after my lunch and I'm sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Um, what? what actually what is it, like something yeah. like that? Your diet? Like do you have to be careful? Do I need to pop this down because she's a bit shorter? Uh no no no. It's no, like it's look it's enough. perfect, bro. Right. No, no, no. Cool. No, you yeah. probably just made it worse. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, all good. So, yeah, what is the day in the life? Okay, first of all, why pole vault for the first thing? <laughs> ben from Wanneroo. I know a bunch of girls that are in a pole in a vault, but not putting pole vault <laughs> together. How do you choose pole vault as a sport? Little uh, athletics or? Yeah, it was like, it, it was actually just like a mistake. <laughs> it's not like I actively wouldn't like 
sorted out, right? Yeah, it yeah. was like I did little athletics, I loved it, I was pretty good at it. Yeah. Um, and Steve Hooker was obviously really big at the time. He just yeah. won an Olympic gold medal. So mm. It was kind of like a go and try day. I got sent like a letter, like, come try this. Yeah. So it was like stuff that like, you know, try it. And then, yeah, it was probably like 30 kids at the go and try day. And then that kind of came down to three and I was one of them. So with, were they like doing like, let's find our best kids for pole vault? Yeah. That's wow. That's really? really? So you're the top 10%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what is that? Does that start from like, what, what were you doing at athletics? Yeah, because like? I remember uh, little ass. We never had the chance to do pole vault oh, unless you were hell shit at javelin. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, over. what are you like, a long jumper at the start or yeah. a high jumper or a sprinter? Yeah, so you got to be fast for pole vault. So I was a really good sprinter. Yeah. And Ooh, I could. Let's compare, yeah. let's compare. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what was your time? Mm. Oh, well, I was 11, dude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't yeah, remember okay. at 11. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't want to doesn't want to have a contest whatever yeah. no worries no whatever. stress yeah. <laughs> no comment, no comment. Yeah. yeah no 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 so you got so the speed i could i could run i could hurdle i could long jump nice but then <sighs> in saying that though like i could also throw a javelin and chuck a shot put so nice. it was just yeah, like, sick. yeah well rounded and coordinated i think was like the number who one did thing. you go yeah. through what was your area say that again like, like who would the, you the like club. so we went through Wanneroo, which was kingsway i was baladura uh, okay. oh well, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh. My bad. Yeah, no, no, it's no, all it's good. okay. I was Perry Lakes. Ah, the yeah. fancy ah, one. Ah, yeah. He's had a real track. <laughs> we were at Kingsway on the fucking grass. You guys had running tracks and all sorts. Yeah. The, okay. I think Perry Lakes and like Boulder Park. Is that a... Uh, it might not be one anymore. Or Kalgoorlie. Yeah, something like that. That's where Kalgoorlie, all the... Kalgoorlie, Boulder Park. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, had right. some good runners coming there. Yeah, okay. Mm. There you go. So, so you've gone down to the trier, trier pole vault day. Yeah. Was it hilarious just seeing people eat shit? Was everyone just, <laughs> was everyone yeah. just eating shit? Or? That's a good question. Yeah. Well, the, f- the thing is, is like you're eating shit as well. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. it's like everyone's <laughs> kind of in this together. So I nah. would I would pay to go watch people try pole vault. <laughs> just like yeah. 30 kids. <laughs> it's so funny. Like all my housemates are always like, oh, you have to like take us down to the track. Like we need to have a go. So yeah. I've taken my boyfriend down one time and like, He's a very athletic, fit, coordinated dude, and he looked like an mm. idiot. <laughs> 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 like, it's just the funniest thing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> how do they get you? Like, how do you do it for the first time? They give you a little tiny one, yeah, and you yeah, do yeah. like a so think literally like a broomstick kind of size, maybe really? a bit bigger, and you plant it into the sand pit, like yeah. the long jump pit, mm. and. Stick it in the sand, you can't miss the sand, and you kind of just go over and land on your feet. That like, sounds pretty fun. So fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so that's you, you did that, and then you progressed into like a tra- specialised program? Yeah, so I joined um, the Institute of Sports, so like Waste Institute of Sport, mm. and – yeah, I was kind of just training and, you you know, you go to a state championships then you go to a national championships yeah. and you're winning some medals and then all of a sudden you're kind of in, like, the Australian youth team, Australian junior team, and well, then all I mean, of a sudden... Well, I mean, you're not all of a sudden, you know? <laughs> you're how good at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of what it felt like. It yeah. was kind of like, you're just doing your thing and a few years later, you're like, okay, shit, I'm representing Australia. Yeah. Like, mm. this is happening. Like a natural progression. When yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I don't want to go that far ahead. I was going to ask about the like the Olympics. Going, was it that first? Yeah, <laughs> I know that was your first Olympics. Huge. Was uh, Tokyo, which was yeah. that was empty. It was empty. Yeah, I actually have a funny oh, story yeah. about that. So uh, my first senior team yeah. was 2015. Mm. I was 18. I was the youngest on the Australian team, the youngest in the field. I came dead last. But basically to like qualify for those world championships, you had to jump like an Olympic qualifier, which right. was the year after 2016. Yeah. And I jumped that qualifier so all my parents and my whole family, like my whole <laughs> goddamn family, <laughs> bought tickets. Mm. And the year after, you know, 18, 19, you're kind of like, you're not really on like the, the what's the word? Like you're not on the best path. Like yeah. you're going out, you're finding yourself and I miss those Olympic Games. Mm. Why? I was just like, like young and dumb and like. Oh, so you're like you qualified but you didn't. Go to them? So I or qualified. you slept in? Or <laughs> <laughs> I just like, this my alarm. Yeah. No, no, no. Like, I, the year before, I basically had cleared the height to qualify. Yeah. And then when the crunch time t- came, the Olympic year, I didn't jump the same height. Ah. Yeah, so. Because of maybe not the best training. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So my whole family and friends went and, like, I just had to sit at home. <laughs> what, so they bought tickets thinking you were going to play? That's incredible. <laughs> They're like, where are you? I'm at the lookout. <laughs> so Sunday say. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, we should go back. That's yeah. my bad. Um, so you go, you go from, like, you, you're starting to represent Australia. Like, yeah. are you doing juniors, Pan Pacifics? What's the next step? Yeah, so you start as a world youth, which is an under 18. Mm-hmm. You go into a world junior, which is under 20. And then basically... From there, it's like out into the real world, which okay. is like the senior competition. And world youth, is it anyone under 18 or is it like 12 to 18 or just uh, if you're good enough? And yeah, you're if you're 18? good enough, if you're qualified, like just okay. they send you kind of thing. Uh, mm. This is my next question and it, it's been an interesting one for me mm. personally. I always look at these sports like pole vault or like diving or maybe not a question, but it's not a sport that we all do as kids in school mm. Mm. And there's a small talent pool and you've just happened to be f- gangster at it. <laughs> are there people that are just good at it because not many people are doing it? Or is it like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like there's a smaller yeah. pool. Like to try to play AFL, mm-hmm. you, every kid's playing every, so th- yep, there's a smaller thing. It. You're the best in the world so mm-hmm. that doesn't apply with you. But I look at these other sports and go, if more kids do it, would, would Australia, good? yeah, would you be yeah. good or would Australia have better – representation mm, no you know? it's a good question i often think about it it's like god if everyone did this maybe mm. I'd be really <laughs> 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 well you're maybe the best I'd in the world <laughs> right so maybe I'd be shit. but yeah. i think in europe and america i think mm. the difference there is that everybody does it yeah. you do it in college you do it in high school um so big there hey it's huge so mm. europeans like love their athletics so everyone's tried it but i think in australia it, again it's not a little athletics it's yeah. It's just the kind of forgotten about yeah. athletic event, which yeah. sucks. It's something you do as a, like a fun. like a young kid. Yeah, like you do it as a young kid. Your parents get around it, and then you sort of just go, "Oh, I'm going to do cricket or footy, yeah, or netball, exactly. or like whatever you fall, what category you fall mm. into." And then, yeah, it is like that. But the diamond league like is fucking huge over in over it's there. Massive, yeah. What, what is the diamond league? I haven't heard of it. So I double AF. Yeah, it? so the diamond league is basically like the elite circuit. Yeah. For athletics okay. in worldwide so there's like 12 competitions a year or mm-hmm. like a season and then there's like the final so like yeah. the finale kind of thing um and you have to qualify to get to the final so mm. that's yeah. a diamond league that's pretty cool oh it's yeah really cool. yeah is it because well, i used to i grew up watching them like so every sunday morning i think it was on like so sbs and i yeah. fucking frothed it <laughs> yeah the, the meets where you'd get like yeah usain bolts and stuff to go there and do it and you're like this, like you're watching them weekly, whereas everyone else just watches them once uh, every four years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where I was all, like every week. W- I know why you're watching up. it. Why? Because you were just trying to get some bust some nuts to hamstrings. Hamstrings, <laughs> love those. He's ha- got a weird fetish <laughs> for good hamstrings. Yeah, I think it shows fitness, and <laughs> <strength>. <laughs> yeah, and good glutes. Yeah, that's what I think it yeah. means. Well, but yeah, he, do you know his? Past as well. He used to be a state four hundred meter runner and was what are you national Australian? Oh, uh, so yeah. You and Masto. Man, Maston, man. What was yeah. your time? For uh, when I was 14 or 15, I ran 52 seconds, okay, which is yeah. reasonable. Oh, that's but awesome. Yeah, um, but uh, I went to footy, played for West Perth, so how I met Deck yeah, through, yeah, yeah, yeah. through that. And, um, yeah, running's always been something I love. Yeah. Deck's yeah. actually probably uh, serendipitously the reason, and listeners know my story about running an ultra w- without training. Uh, he inspired me to do that. Really? In Richo... Uh, Ian Richardson and um oh no fuck he listens and I feel bad now oh who's the other guy who did the bike ride with him Richo's mate yeah fuck <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I feel so bad sorry bro um, yeah, anyway name. they decided to do this ride down to Albany yeah for the, for charity to raise money for the bushfires and then like t- what two or three weeks before Deck decided he was going to do it oh. no he, training he literally had gone on like two bike rides yeah. before the actual thing. <laughs> no shit. And, like, and halfway down, like they were, his parents were down with a fucking, their elbows and like balls like on well, his he's calves. Italian. And, oh, and he's, he was him. like captain or vice captain and now captain of Claremont. He's yeah. a very important football player to that football club. And I don't think they were too <laughs> keen on him doing it. But the fact that he got there and did it yeah. without any training, I actually looked back on that when I was running into my, my first ultra without training. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, man, well, that guy Declan can, do, can that. do it. Yeah. Maybe yeah. he's just better than me. Well, <laughs> but 450 Ks on a bike when you've never done it before. Yeah. 
But anyway, that's that yeah. aside. Yeah, that's where that's I got insane. into a bit of running yeah. as that's well. That's awesome. But yeah, that IAAF stuff. Um, but yeah. that's you. It does create that huge pool for Europeans and um, yeah. and the internationals. So it must feel good to get to a point where you are number one in the world. Uh, number um, one, number <laughs> one. But it wasn't. It wasn't so easy. Clearly, oh um, God, there was, no. um, and even yeah. What's the path and what was your specific one? Because you're our guest, I want to talk about yeah, general. Yeah. For you to become number one in the world. What sort of dedication did it take? You said that you missed the Olympics because you were finding yourself, which we know is air quotes for... Going out too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. how did... When did you go, right, fuck it, I've, I've partied... Because I mean, you're only 26 right now, right? So you're still a baby in my eyes. Mm. Um, so were you like, oh, this is something I'm going to do. I'm going to fully commit to it. Or did someone sit you down and go, listen, man. Um, or woman, sorry. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> it was just like... I... Th- I don't even know where to start with that yeah. question. It was always like, this is what I'm going to do. Mm. I'm going to go to the Olympics and I'm going to try and be like the best I can. And I think when you have that like attitude for so long, you can get quite complacent, yeah. right? Mm. So, you know, I was kind of just drifting through, you know, I was making World Champs teams and, you know, made the Commonwealth Games in 2018. I won a bronze medal at 21. Like, sick, like, awesome. And it probably got to 2020 Mm -hmm. and I was like what am I doing Mm -hmm. like yeah like cool let's be like top eight in the world like awesome but it's like I'm not putting all this time and effort in to just kind of like Mm -hmm. have a subpar career and I know that top eight in the world isn't a subpar career but I was like I want to be the fucking best yeah Yeah. fulfill your potential let's go win some medals like let's roll the dice like let's see what I can do like let's just like be the best version of myself awesome. an athlete i can be and like then i can retire and be like you know what i gave it a red hot crack yeah. and like that's what i that's can be wicked. proud of were you, were you sacrificing things as a teenage chick um with your training and, and social life like i i like yes but a part of me was always like well there's a reason for yeah. this you yeah, know cool. like you can only and you didn't feel bitter about it like afl boys you know, when they're 15, mm. 16, they, they sacrifice a lot of stuff to, to play AFL, like maybe parties and everyone else is drinking or whatever it is. Mm. And they know I'm going to play AFL, so they stick to it. And some guys don't, and they fucking look back and they... Until, well, it's until they it. get to the cults and they True. realise yeah. that, nope, you just yeah. drink. <laughs> but, well, did you, do you feel bitter or resentful or you're stoked that? I definitely don't feel resentful. If anything, it was always just like, this is my path mm-hmm. and like this is what I'm doing. And if anything, I get these like crazy cool like not benefits but like mm. other things that like make up for that yeah, yeah. like interviewing the hard yards <laughs> <laughs> so, so but uh, it, it, sometimes it is just the like the mindset switch yeah. of like hey i'm just gonna give it everything here how old were you you said 2020 yeah so i think 2020 well, going into the olympics again it was kind of like a weird time of my life where I, again i was just kind of like floating by and then COVID hit and i was just like nah, like, let's do something different. Like, mm. let's just, like, let's just fucking do it. Yeah. Like, let's see what I can do. And then I, I just did all this different stuff. Like, I sought out a mentor. Like, cool. I changed my diet. I changed my mindset. Like, I was, everything I was doing, like, all right, was Let's break that career. down a bit. Yeah. So Does it start with gym? Yeah. Does it start with mindset, mentor? Step yeah. one was mentor or yeah. step one, yeah. So yeah. H- how did you find a, a good mentor and so what was the process? we just happened to... I don't even know, just like, it was an accident. Again, like, very just, let's let's chat. So we chatted Are you and... Talking about Declan or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and it kind of just went from, like, learning the basics. And I think this is probably a difference between a team sport and an individual sport. Mm-hmm. But, like, yeah, you have people around you on an individual level. You have your coach, you have your dietitian. But, like, I think in a team sport, it's much more like got to do this because we're giving you this huge salary Mm -hmm. but with you it's like okay you have a scholarship and like they're going to help you out but like at the end of the day like you got to drive that bus Mm -hmm. so i was like i'm going to drive this bus i'm going to make some changes um i did a sleep study cool started with my sleep how did that go it was insane like i wore this like real like the best sleep um gadget on the market found about all this stuff about myself changed my sleep um, what was happening before it? Were you like waking up intermittently? Was it like 
yeah, what, were you getting distracted? And basically, like, your sleep, my sleep quality wasn't good enough. Basically, really? it was saying that I was awake for an hour every night. Yeah. Wow. Which you don't think you are, but, like, the stages of sleep, you are. Yeah. Is it, like, uh, light in the room or... Yeah. Uh, I'm just fascinated with sleep studies. Yeah. yeah. Sleep is, like, a, a deep dive. I'd listen to every podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sleep, like, just learnt so much. Like, yeah. now it's, like, I sleep with an eye mask, yeah. earplugs, and <laughs> I went through this phase of, like, taping my mouth shut as well. I was, like... You do the ma- mouth taping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Don't come near me. <laughs> <laughs> no good. Like, I am recovering right now. Fro- oh, really? Yeah, like... It's like being waterboarded, but to yourself. <laughs> like, did you struggle to breathe or did you, like... Well, it's just to, like, activate nasal breathing, right? So, basically, I just, like, went on this crazy path of, like, health. Yeah. So, sleep, got my, like, diet in order, like, changed to, like, fully organic, like, no processed food, nice. like... Was that expensive and difficult? Yeah, of yeah. course. But, again, I kind of came back to this idea of, like... Well, this is like an investment. Yeah, right? yeah fuck yeah. Like, yeah, yeah it's going to cost like a bit more and it's going to be a bit difficult, but like, this is work now. Yeah. And like, just to. And set it's the clearly context. paid off. Yeah. 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 Like, to set and the all context. of this is mindset, right? Yeah. It is. Like, so just to set the context, like, I'm being paid, but it's not like, like I'm scraping by kind of thing. Yeah. So, like, I, it's kind of like, let's just put all these eggs in this basket. Mm. In my head, it's an investment. Organi- and then like, Organic eggs. Yeah, organic yeah. eggs. <laughs> and if it pays off, and hell yeah. And Fuck if it doesn't, yeah. then yeah. I didn't. So, yeah, I just saw it as an investment. Um, and the year after that, so that season, I kind of made all those changes. I broke the Australian record. That's so cool. Because mm. I was the best Aussie, like, to ever be kind of thing. That's fucking so cool, man. You it just had this switch, made, cha- like, All small changes, changes, but big changes, right? Huge. Like, little ones that have added up, and you've unlocked this fucking, like, Goku, but Dragon it's Ball like Z, just <laughs> <laughs> Super Saiyan. And not everyone has that in Nah. Them. Because you, you're right, you were in that situation where you, and I think a lot of people fall into it, like, I'm pretty good, I've got talent, mm. like, yeah. I can do this, and you'll just rely on that. You see that with footy players, you see yeah. that with a lot of people in sports. Mm. And then sometimes just that, I'm guilty of this, I really look back on my footy and go, I wish I put t- f- time and effort into diet, into sleep, yeah. into into yeah. my weights program, into all of those sorts of things. And I think a lot of people are the same. Yeah. Mm. You were you know, switched young on enough, enough yeah, smart enough to go, I fucking want this. And yeah. that's I, I think that's probably the difference between, you know, the best in the world mm. and then the people who just scrape through. Yeah, that yeah. hell break, it makes me really happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, like, that's so cool. Because it also yeah. shows you, I think there's a lot of people who are close to being able to do that mm. physically, but mentally they just don't put the effort in and they, yeah. don't, they don't have the drive. So there must be something in you that's, mm. that drives you I to be... got a bit of dog in <laughs> Yeah, yeah. dog in you. got to, man, to be the, like... You Where did like, you grow up? Yeah. I grew up in Bustleton. So oh, well, there we go. That explains it. Not yeah. yeah, but, you know, Get the I'm, dog a, in you. I'm yeah. a Perth girl. But yeah. just even those mental changes that you don't even think you need to make, right? Yeah. You got to, like, see, I seriously ask my, like, some, myself some questions of, like, why am I doing this? Like, yeah. where do I want to go? Like, yeah. who do I want to become? And it's, like... Mm. Okay, what are like my limiting beliefs? Like, what's holding me back? Why aren't I there when when I should be mm. there? Kind of thing. And you know, I found out like I just didn't believe in myself. Mm. Like, oh, just I think that Delby's <laughs> going through that right now. Mm. Well, just yeah. like that's those subconscious beliefs that in training are holding you back, and you don't even realize it. Mm. And just you what? know, shifting your mindset and shifting your self-talk. How did you, how yeah, did what, you what change was your, that? Yeah. What was your um, limiting belief that you went, hang on a sec, that's not true? It was just like I wasn't good enough. Yeah. Like I was good, but I was never going to be like the best. To yeah. Which I think a lot of people, uh, I th- actually I'd say almost everyone yeah. feels that. For um, sure. So, so you just tap out, right? Yeah. yeah. So what, what, why, what was it for you that changed? How yeah. did you flip that mindset? What yeah. did, you, did you meditate? Did you, was it mm. just like positive self-talk what was it do you do you know or do you think you just something just clicked it was, it was kind of like fake it to you make it Fuck for a yeah. little bit yeah. and it's like let's see what happens and then you start running these little experiment right these experiments in training and it's like okay let's say you're gonna go up like i don't know five kilos in a squat chin bench whatever and yeah. it's like Okay, I actually can't do that. But mm. then it's like, okay, let's just like run this experiment. Like, let's pump myself the mm. fuck up. Let's yeah. like change that self talk. Let's just like leave it all out there. Yeah. Mm. And then you get it and you're like, 
there is no way that I thought I could get that. Yeah. Yeah, and then awesome. you apply that to your jumping and then you apply that in mm. like other areas of your life and you're like, holy shit, like <laughs> I'm moving places. And, you know, and then That's you kind cool. of like trick yourself into being like, wait, I can do those things. Like yeah. if I can do that, then like why can't I be number one in the world? Like, yeah. And it 100%. is just a snowball, right? Yeah. So good. It's, it's, it is baby steps, hey. It's Aww. like just do that first one. Get that first, mm. that first little step in the right direction, mm. whether it's an extra weight session, yeah. Whether it's yeah, fuck. I guess even if it's fact, just diet, yeah. Yeah, the fact that you get that instant feedback as well, where you've gone, I can't do it. Then you do this, and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's physically, yeah, I that's can yeah, do it. yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. Um, and you said a mentor. Did your who who what, who did you find as a mentor? So it was my sister's workmate and he was kind of like starting off in the mentoring like business sphere Mm. and he was really into health and Mm. all that stuff and, you know, we only probably worked together for like six to 12 months and it was really great. We definitely outgrew each other but, God, he taught me some valuable lessons. So was it discussions with him that helped flip this mindset or was that something you found on your own or from podcasts? It was definitely like he definitely helped me but then you listen to podcasts and – this yeah. is going to sound so stupid, but we did this thing and it was like I was trying to break the Australian record that season and I'd probably attempted it like three or four competitions in a row and I just couldn't get it. Mm-hmm. And then one day we literally like oh, – we literally like acted it out, like the preparation, the like the pre-jump kind of thing and it was like you're not going to stop until like I can see that you believe in yourself and you're actually going to clear the bar. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like felt so stupid at the time but like the next competition it was like holy shit I got this like right. I'm clearing this bar no matter what. Did That's you clear it in practice? So you clear it in competition yeah. to make it count. Yeah, but had you cleared it in practice no. so you knew you could do it? Okay, wow, no, no, no. right. Mm. So you prepped yourself all the way up to that point yeah. and then smashed it. It sounds yeah. like you knew Fuck deep yeah. down that you could. Probably knew deep down you could. And yeah. Yeah, I think sometimes our egos get in the way. Mm. Mm. Our ego, um, like like I talk about this a lot, ego blocks our intuition and our, you know, our gut feeling. Mm. But it's important to have it. Uh, and it's you don't have to detach from ego itself, but uh, I think what's important is to check you know, yourself. Well, to understand there's a relationship that we need to have where we can have a, a, a pretty good balance between ego and our gut. Mm-hmm. And if you if you sort of navigate your way around it like that and just have a bit of a harmony in which we can you know follow that gut and intuition, I think you're going to just dive in and yeah. absolutely smash it. Yeah, I totally agree. But or, or just check what your thoughts are, just that first thought isn't necessarily the truest one. Exactly. Like, I can't do that. Yeah. Like if you listen to that immediate thought, no fucking way, man, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And if you just listen to that without going, hang on, why? Mm. Questioning yourself, like, yeah. you know. It's a self-limiting yeah, belief. That yeah, that first thought not, might not necessarily be you. It could be your fucking, your ego, your brain, your consciousness, like, And, like, know. also, 100%. like, I went on this journey of, like, figuring out where that voice was coming mm. from, right? So mm. just going that level deeper and being like, okay, it's coming from there, like... Mm. That's just stupid. Yeah. Like, why are you going to let that, like, thing define your self-talk for, yeah. like, the rest of your life? Yeah, yeah. the, uh, what is it, you are, you are not, your, th- you're not your thoughts? Or you are not your thoughts. You yeah. are not your thoughts. We've spoken yeah. about that. You are that not your thoughts. You yeah. are not your thoughts, so. And even some of the thoughts are stemming from, like you said, another place. Like, when you might have been told when you're a kid, you're trying something for the first time. Yeah, and fuck yeah. Your mum's yeah. going, what are you doing that for? That's stupid. And you go, oh, that is stupid. Why am I trying? And then as an adult man, you go... By the way, my mum's never said this, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but then when you're an adult man, you still have that belief from when you're a kid. Yeah, no, I'm going to yeah. try it. It's stupid. You're no longer that person. You're a full grown man. You've got fucking better skills. Mm. So, yeah. Um, it's really interesting. I didn't, yeah, this is fucking, oh, I'm really excited. Eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a really cool but little chat. I think it also gives hope to people who are, who do doubt themselves mm. that you, it does just take a few little things to switch, to change. Yeah, and man, put in the work, sure. right? Obviously, yeah. 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 Um, but um, that led to, obviously, some great things. Yeah. Going to the Olympics um, in 20... Well, was it first the Olympics? Like, qualifying for those Olympics must have been challenging. Um, yeah, it's pretty... E- oh, I don't want to say it's easy <laughs> to qualify for uh, athletics, but, you know, it's not as cutthroat as swimming where there is one 
um, a competition you can kind of qualify. That's so at. insane, isn't it's it? Insane. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't Surely it should be like an average of times <laughs> over three things. But then on the flip side, that is what the elite part is. It's prepping yourself mm. to a single point in time. Can you prepare better than anyone else? I understand that. But for you to clear the Australian national champ after you've done that um, visualization, almost uh, run through it like a rehearsal, mm. what was the feeling inside? Did you feel like over, like, were you stoked or were you like, yeah, I knew I could do it? It was like, uh, it was like, the weird thing about like athletics is like you set such long term goals mm-hmm. and it's like, it's just almost like a relief that it pays off. It's like, oh my God, I cannot believe I did like, that's yeah. insane kind of thing. So you kind of get, not addicted, but you definitely set these like super long term goals. And mm. like yeah. You're just waiting for the day that they pay off. Yeah. Because mm. then you've got the Australian record, which means now you have to look further than that. Yeah. So yeah. how... F- just for numbers, what is the Australian record and what was the what is the world record? Mm. So in twenty twenty one, I cleared four eighty two. Okay. Uh, so that's like the best jump on of Australian woman ever. Yep. Just for context, in two thousand, Tatiana Grigorieva, the Australian pole vaulter, that kind of like most people know, yep. she mm. cleared four fifty to come wow. Se- second. Wow. Fuck. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> thirty centimeters, thirty-two centimeters yeah. higher. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. So I think it just kind of That's shows. A Peter like North length longer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck <weird>. Jesus. <laughs> like how far um, women's sport has come in mm. like women's pole vault. So wow. Yeah. Is that also yeah. like uh, was that technique and, and yeah. training and all that adding up to it, or is there you know equipment? Shoes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good like, question. Uh, is it the f- you know the bounce of the latex? Like, yeah. what is it? I don't know. I think it's just women becoming serious about sport. I think. Ah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Personally, yeah. Um, Bigger pool now. Yeah, yeah there's heaps yeah, more yeah. men in the sport. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you have to knuckle down if you want to beat those blokes oh, that are injuring. Fuck. I don't think that's legal yet in the Olympics or uh, anything like sure. that. I don't think it should be. No comment from you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't speak. <laughs> I don't want to get you in any trouble, but no. I would personally be pissed off if I had men mm. coming into my division and people being cool with it. That would be fucking shit. I can very clearly state that I think Nina would probably mop. What no comment. F- yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I think she would mop the floor with us regardless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every bloke on their lounge. Yeah, I'll fucking do that. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, is it for me? Right, I feel that when you're going. That looks like one of the scariest fucking things mm. ever to jam it in and pull yourself all the way up and flip over. Especially as a guy when you're coming back down. That was my next thing. <laughs> <laughs> Injuries and fear, where does that fit into it? Mm. Is there fear? Because you're 4.82 meters, if you fall from down. the top, yeah. that's a fair fucking crack, man. I oh. got PTSD from falling out of a cubby and fucking my back for my whole <laughs> life when I was 12. Yeah. And that was like as high as this roof, which is what do you reckon that is? Two, one and a half metres, two? Yeah, right, two three. And a half, yeah. So you're going an extra fuckload more. Mm. Is there fear or you're just that used to it? Um, it's, not, it's not scary, but I think probably the scariest thing about our sport is basically like, so if I'm jumping in a competition, I normally have like eight poles with me. Right. So the bigger the pole, the higher you're going to jump basically. So mm. we have this saying in the pole where it's like, oh, this is my money pole. Like, mm. I'm going to make some money on this pole. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> all right. I know those girls as well. It's <laughs> 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 back to the opening start. Oh, yeah. Shit. So like it's a, it's a, it's, it's a really like big pole and you've basically like never kind of used that before in training or a competition. Oh, so it's like you were doing it for the first time. Yeah. And oh, it's so basically like it's – it's just difficult. Like everything has to align yeah. to complete a jump on that pole. So I yeah. think it's like we say, like when you're going up pole, yeah. you're going to do something you've never touched, and like that's quite scary. Yeah, fuck because yeah. Like, if you don't put everything in a line, like you're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like being calm enough to execute what you know, but in the back of your mind, you're like, holy shit, like I could really stuff this up here. What are some of the most common injuries? Because like very rarely the pole snaps, but when you see it and then you see the pole going up dudes' butts, like that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Oh, so scary. What are the most common ones? Is it shoulders? Is it legs? Is it uh, concussions? Like you get wear and tear, right? So like yeah. I've had a few stress fractures in my back. But oh my God. Yeah, you're coming back from some Why? pretty Just solid injury, the, hey? Yeah. Because of the pull up? Um, I, I, if you watch, like, kind of when you take off, mm. 
the your body has to break somewhere. Yeah. And normally that's your lower back. Oh, so that. all that momentum's kind of in your lower back. So because wow. uh, so from memory and, and yeah, you'll have to jog my memory on this. You had some pretty big issues that you dealt with even prior to the. Was it the last Olympics? Yeah, you were like through? oh my gosh, like you've had. I've definitely had my fair share of injuries, but I think that's just part of part of it. And mm. then also, like I guess in that step to becoming better, and like I was saying before, it's like, how can we avoid these? Like, let's just get better. Like, let's get smarter. Let's learn. Let's yeah. not play the victim anymore. Like, oh, I did my hammy? Like, boo hoo! It's yeah. like, why did I do my hammy? Like, yeah. what were the specific things that I did that led to that? Yeah. And just being smarter around that. Um, That's good. And then so, uh, getting and qualifying to the Olympics, you get to the Olympics, and then would. Did you go? Did you have to go into quarantine almost straight away? What was that issue? Uh, okay, I'm sorry, no, I haven't no, jogged no, no, my memory. No, no. And did they have? I heard the beds were made of cardboard or something to Best. stop Olympic athletes from sleeping on each other's beds. <laughs> yeah, so normally you have like condoms all around the village, but like these Olympics, they just weren't. <laughs> oh my god! They just they just have a one child policy plastered around. It's the a whole lot village. of. It's it a is illegal to have two children in China. <laughs> well, Don't start with one. <laughs> Don't start with one. <laughs> Well, it's a lot of athletic, good-looking people running around. I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of action going on. But what uh, happened? Because you, you guys went into quarantine. Yeah, it was oh, it was a bit of a shambles. But basically, my training partner and I we got kicked out of the village because we <laughs> kind of well, I shouldn't say kicked out. We got removed from the village because we kind of came in contact with some COVID. And <sighs> the policy was, if you caught COVID, you couldn't compete at the Olympics. Mm. So it was like, okay, I've trained four years. I've yeah. trained my whole life and I'm going to catch this thing and I can't compete. So it was pretty cutthroat and I obviously understand why all those you know policies were put in place. But basically, we got removed from the village into a hotel. We couldn't leave and... If we kept testing negative, we could compete. So it was actually really good by the Australian Olympic Committee to like al- allow us to compete, but mm. it what, was pretty hectic. Was there – look, I know you wouldn't have done it, but is there a way to keep the previous test and just switch <laughs> it out so it looks negative, so you've always got a negative? Or Dude, was it hell strict? It what, was who was it, ASADA so or was it Australia testing you or China testing you? No, it was it – was the was like Olympic the Committee, Olympics. yeah, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whoever yeah. that was, <laughs> the Olympics, right? yeah, right, yeah, it was insane. So especially now, like when you know it was fuck all. Well, yeah, and I think that yeah, it's it's all a bit of hindsight, isn't it? But mm. um, yeah, I was just lucky to compete and it was definitely experience like i just wanted to forget because you didn't get that <laughs> what cause, well because that way you, 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 you didn't get to forget to, well you didn't get to train hey you didn't get to do anything into oh, leading up so it was it such was, a bad prep it was hard so like so what four months early i broke the australian record you know i was going for a medal like yeah. this is what i was going to do yeah and then i had a few injuries two weeks out from the olympics i strained my quad and then you're in the village and then you get kicked out and it's just like mm, I've boy. never experienced a panic attack before, like except for when I was in that hotel room like uh, by myself. Like it was just – Wow. It was insane. Like imagine working your whole life for something and it just falling apart in front of your eyes and yeah. it's like oh – And what did you – like yeah. a panic attack is huge. Like, if you've never what? had one as well. Yeah. Oh, what did, just, what's did you think the you were dying? Did you think COVID? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what I was thinking. I was like this is the worst thing I've – Ever experienced. Like, yeah. when people talk about the, their lowest of lows, like, that was definitely mine. Like, I didn't want to compete. Yeah. How like, did you manage – how did you pull yourself out of it? Because, like, when I've had mine, yeah. you're convinced you're going to die and you're never going to yeah. snap out of it and your brain feels like it's on fire and melting. Yeah. Yeah. How did you – I think it was like, okay, in this, in this next few days when your competition's coming up, like, what will make you the most proudest? Mm. In a week's time, I want to look back and say, you know what, I did my best. Mm. So what does that look like? You know, I wasn't informed. I, you know, I'd strained my quad. It was like, okay, I'm not. And the medal isn't on the cards, but at least like go out there and like give it your best shot mm. and do what you know. And that's what I did. I think I came like twelfth. I didn't make the final, but like I jumped well, and I was mm. like proud of myself. Yeah. So Considering the lead up, twelfth yeah. in the entire world is. Pretty good. Mm. Oh, it, it, it's good, but when your <laughs> expectations are, yeah. you know, a lot higher, it does suck. So, so did you use that to drive you, yeah. to motivate you? Because you, you've, you, it's like having. So obviously, being mates with Deck, mm. I was following you on socials, and it, it's like you went into a, 
like beast mode. Mm. Like I and I don't know whether that was a intentional thing. Maybe that is the mindset change. You just said, nah, fuck this. And your your content turned into oh, I'm fucking getting it sort of stuff. Is and this it, the year after or like when I got back from the Olympics? Yeah, or? just noticed a, like a mind I just noticed this change in mm. what seemed to be something that would look someone who looked very fucking ambitious. Yeah. Um and then yeah, you've come back and, you know, Commonwealth Games, World mm. Championships and then yeah. We've got the upcoming Olympics. Mm. It's uh, pretty exciting. So let's go to Commonwealth Games. That's yeah. that's a big fucking achievement. Mm. Yeah. So the yeah. So the year after the Olympics, you know, I was down in the dumps, but I'm you know I'm gaining a bit of hope, bit of belief. You know what? I'm an Australian record holder. Like, mm. kind of yep. let's see where this can go. So that next year again, like, just went hard. And so 2022 was the first year where I performed on the world stage at the best of my ability and i'd never done that before. that's awesome mm. so i jumped for 80 at the world championships and i came third mm-hmm. in the whole world and i was like hell yeah, yeah. You know, two weeks later i went on i won the commonwealth games you know australia love the commonwealth games yeah. so like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome and then again two weeks later i went on and won the diamond league final wow mm. so and then i finished that year with a world ranking of number two and, like, things were, like, okay, yeah, mm-hmm. sick. Cool. Like, you know, you sign a few contracts and you're getting into meets and you're getting, like, paid to rock up to meets now. And, you know, things were definitely falling into place. Mm. The sponsorships? Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and then 2023, it was, like, okay, the snowball's, like, it's rolling. Mm. <laughs> like, this it's is momentum, awesome. momentum, hey. Yeah. Mo- momentum, and that's with everything, but momentum – Took over and so yeah. and confirmation that you fucking actually really good. Yeah, yes. like you're smashing it. F- fuck yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. And like when I when I was talking before about like proving to yourself that you are good, it's like okay, like I've I've evidence now. It's yeah. like I am goddamn good. So mm. like let's just like mm-hmm. see what else I can do. Mm. So yeah, I wanted to win worlds. That was my goal. Um, yeah, and then what did you what, what did you jump in worlds? So I jumped four ninety. Fuck yeah! So like in the <laughs> world <laughs> way further than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So at the world championships, I broke my sh- my own Australian record twice. That's sick. To are you mad that you could have just like spaced it out? And <laughs> 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 yeah. Like ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> no, there's, there's did you win by a lot? So I came equal first. I don't know if you guys remember that, but we yeah we shared the medal and like there was a bit of was there a bit of controversy around that? Yeah, like there definitely was. I feel like (laughs) why? I I I think it was really cool. Like Australia loved it. It was after the Tillies had just you know kind of blown up Australia, and it was all like, yeah, the girls like great sportsmanship, like amazing. And then in America, it was like. You guys are cowards. Like you should have kept jumping. Like, Fuck. win at all costs kind of thing. Mm, so, I actually felt really great coming back to Well, Australia. that's such a reverse because Australia's got tall poppy syndrome. Yeah, yeah, We've yeah. done the mateship thing. Yeah, yeah. And America's are always about, give it your best girl. <laughs> and they're like, hey, let's fucking... What I liked, uh, it was exactly the same as, I think, the high jumpers. I think yeah. that had the, the same Italian? Do, yeah, yeah, Italian do that before. Yeah. It fucking, like, it almost brings a tear to your eye watching it and your reaction... When yeah. you when you guys decide that you're going to share it, fuck, that's uh, pretty special. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, I, I, and I, yeah, I don't care what they're saying. I fucking love saying that sort of stuff. But yeah. it must feel. What's that feel like being when you find out you are the best in the on world the planet out of, out of f- eight billion people? Yeah, like that's so sick. It's sick. It was just like. Oh my god! I've set my goals like so damn high to a point where like maybe I thought I'd never get them, mm. but I did that. Like yeah. I fucking did that, and like that was just like the sickest feeling. So I saw the jump um, on one of the videos. Yeah, it looked like if it was the same jump, it looked like you cleared it by a fucking ton. <laughs> Is that just the camera angle, or yeah, like did you just go over nah, it? Or? I, I definitely just went over it. There right. are a few camera angles which yeah, it, it can look like. Yeah, I thought you were like clearing it by stuff. I was like, why, why did you just go for more? And it just, yeah. it gets to a point where you both can't clear a height. Is that right? And, and until... So the, the, the interesting thing about pole vault is like, normally there's always a winner. In my whole career, mm. you either come first, second, or third, whatever. You never come a draw. But basically mm. this is the first time in my whole career that I'd come a draw. Mm. 
And normally you go to like a, what they say is like a jump off. Mm. Yeah. So you can share the gold or you go to a jump off. And we were like, let's just share it. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm t- I'm tired. That's what's really fair. <laughs> 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 no pole position. Yeah, like, I mean, what? So everyone else in the world has always gone for a jump off. Yeah, that's what you do. So <sighs> this is the first time in history that it's kind what of ever fuck? happened where wow. we share. What's so the world record at the moment? The world record is five oh. I want to say six. I think. So My when you break track. it, what are you going to jump at the Olympics? <laughs> Oof. What's your goal? Because so you, I've been watching. You are training fucking hard. Uh, I, and <laughs> well, when you, you must break, have, you will be breaking it. What are you doing? Five ten? Um, I, I, so if I'm honest, the world record definitely isn't on my radar this year. An Olympic gold medal, potentially five meters, is on my radar. But dude, world record is like that's insane. Yeah. So. Oh, you, well, you got it. What, you're 26. <laughs> you're in your prime. I love it. And who's the American uh, girl that you uh, equal? Her with? name's Katie Moon. Katie, Katie Moon. Moon. What a good mm. what a good name for a pole vaulter. <laughs> Katie like, Moon. To the yeah, moon, she's man. always like, to the hey, moon. Hey, did it at all. Katie jumped over the moon. And so would you two be the two, like, not rivals, I guess. Do you get along? Like, yeah, what's the go? Question. Is it rivalry? Is it like, we get along, but we both fucking want this? Yeah, it's definitely that. It's funny, like, you know, Dad plays footy, like, have a lot of footy mates, and they're always like, dude, just, like, mix it up, like, Throw some chat in there, like. Mm. <laughs> well, like fucking. Throw <laughs> 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 like some slurs in there. Kind of thing, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> something wild, yeah. and I'm like, no. Nah. It's an eclipse tonight, bitch. Fucking <laughs> 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 oh, um, help, but it, 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 it must be. It must be tough because you see that with footy players, cricket, and I'm just using them because that's mm. what my experience is. Some people you fucking hate them on the footy field, and then off the field you're sort of Hell best mates, mates yeah. and that's what it is. Yeah. I don't know. Is it like that with uh, athletes? I guess uh, in general. Because um, so and and also side note, what connections do you have with Alicia Schmidt, German 400 meter runner? Oh, is that one you're in love with? <laughs> just a little bit in love with her. <laughs> a little Schmidt. I'm oh, just a little bit. Oh, that's funny. Um, what was your question? Yeah, do you, do you like... Oh, are we friends? The, yeah. the, yeah. the white line fever and stuff yeah. is there, but... I guess it's like you're travelling around the world with them. You see a lot mm. of each other. So it's like it would just be awkward if you weren't friendly. Like yeah. just be friendly and then beat them out on the competition field. Yeah. Is kind of like you won't be sharing techniques or training methods. You keep all that st- oh, stuff I to yourself. do. Oh, you do share? No, no, okay. no I, I yeah, keep it yeah, to myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that's why you're the best in the world. <laughs> um, who, now, this is the thing that's been eating away at me. I thought pole vaulters were meant to be real tall. You're not tall at all, right? Yeah, I get that all the time. What's with that? Is that just, have you got good shoulder strength to hold your own body out? What's the go? The, the cool thing about pole vault is, like, you can jump the same height, like, a hundred different ways. You right. can be short and really fast and have, like, a really low powerful. grip on the mm. pole. You mm. can be quite powerful. Or you can be quite quite a tall, um, tall person with a really high grip. You're a bit slower, mm. and you're not a relying on the power as much. So it really kind of just depends. So I'm definitely shorter, more powerful, fast. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So you, uh, another couple of things you've uh, recently achieved. You won the was it Australian Athlete of the Year uh, or the West Australian? Uh, I won. Yeah. The what did I win? Go on, um, let's, list, no. let's list them all. <laughs> Actually, you know what my favourite is? Didn't you get Bruce McAvaney's favourite moment of the year? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I did. Delicious. And that's so that's cool. better than the Melbourne Cup. That's huge for him. <laughs> How did he, did he call it? Brucey. Was he calling it? Or did he just, it was just his favourite moment? I don't know, he fucking loves you. So, yeah, Brucey, Brucey's awesome. So he's like obviously huge in athletics and they have this, uh, performance of the year, the Bruce McAvaney Award. Oh, wow. And he, yeah, he gave it to me, which is kind of cool. That's mm, sick. Yeah. That's, That's pretty awesome. sick. Uh, but, yeah, was it the West Australian Institute of Sport? Yeah, uh, so the West Athlete of the Year, um, yeah, that which was, yeah, pretty cool. Oh. Australian Athlete of the Year as well for like, athletics. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That's pretty cool. How's that little well, hum- humble? Yeah, that's good. You should be proud of it for sure. <laughs> yeah, just the, the Australian best. Athlete of the Year. It's yeah. fucking awesome. Um, what um, I was going to ask you before we are talking about it, um, the Peter Bowl incident, how do you go – how often does Asada show up? Do they just randomly pop up, do you know, when you're getting drug tested? And with what happened to Peter Bowl, that's pretty dog shit, mm. right? How they fucked up and essentially just ruined his whole uh, reputation. Yeah, like it's – 
pretty insane. I do really feel for Pete. I didn't follow it as much as I should have, so I don't know the ins and outs, but basically if you're at a certain level in the sport, you have like a whereabouts. So for an hour every single day, I have to write down what address I'm going to be at. Every single night, I have to say where I'm sleeping. Are you fucking kidding? That's no. Like that, that like all the time. Every, that every feels single day of too video. invasive. Can't they just check your iPhone? Like, <laughs> yeah. they, well, the do any, they do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. so invasive. Like, what if you don't know where you're staying? Well, that's the thing. So it's like if I'm going down south on a last minute trip, yeah. I have to enter that address, what room I'm in, everything. Oh kind my of thing. god, so that sounds illegal. Like yeah. that doesn't sound right. You know? Yeah. It, it, when you say it out loud, it doesn't sound right. But I guess like. There is a lot of like doping in our sport. So mm. if this is like the one way they can keep it clean, then like I'm going to participate. Mm. So it obviously can get quite crazy so when you're traveling around Europe for four months and you're like, oh my mm. God, I'm staying in a different address every night. Is it so. as simple yeah. as they've created an app for athletes like yourself? Or is yeah. it like you have to log onto this website and it's all. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's a website or an app, you just enter it and. Okay, yeah. so it's not too. It's not too bad. It sounds like a possessive boyfriend <laughs> or a crazy girlfriend. Yeah, are you sure this Where is are just. You? Given to you by deck, and yeah. he's like, "Tell me where you are <laughs> every fucking time." Whose house are you sleeping in? <laughs> what time are you going to be there? That's fucked. Yeah, just something about this. Uh, I'm pretty sure you've got to sign this in. But. Yeah. Well, that's why I think that the um, what I wanted to talk about is the the millionaire billionaire Olympic Games, where you don't have to do that because you're allowed to take any performance enhancing substances. Yeah. Who is it, Magnuson? James Magnuson. If he gets the world record, he's going to get paid one and a half million dollars. See, so they've promised to him. This interests me because I don't think you'll get the best. Well, Magnuson's an interesting case because he's still only 28. So, so he's, still, he's still essentially right in the prime. Mm. And if he can use any sort of anabolics or anything to improve breathing or strength, power. Look at Nina um, over there just, yeah. just getting quiet. <laughs> just like, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? That they're, like, that they're introducing I think, it. I think it's entertainment. Yeah. And I think you have to have like, a, you have to have like some regulations to call it sport, right? I yeah. wouldn't call that sport. I'd call that entertainment. So I think just the thing that worries me is obviously like they've said that they're going to, it all medically safe and bloody, mm-hmm. bloody, blah. But like, who mm. knows? Like, it's yeah. such a great Just like the COVID area. jab, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, just p- I, I won't put words in your mouth. I don't want to get you in any trouble, but like, I'll say from my point of view, and then you can say no comment or whatever. If I'm a professional athlete, I'd love to know what I can get out of my body by the rules. Yeah. But then, isn't there that little voice that goes, oh, I could run two seconds quicker if I did this. I want to see what my body can do safely. Mm. How interesting would that be to see what I can actually get to? Because it is, <laughs> it is natural because another human has created it, right? So it's there. And if it works, you can use it. I think that that would be itching at me going, I wonder if I could have gone faster. Knowing once you've got the full, oh, the f- okay. you've ju- juiced everything out of your natural ability, if you can get that little bit extra. I'll give my opinion and then you can give I'll, yours. I would love to see a four second hundred. <laughs> just, oh, that's not going to happen. Just, <laughs> yeah, just get Webb and Yama from, <laughs> just bulk him up. He takes eight steps. So you'd, you'd have to be getting the best in the world to see it. Exactly. Anyway, which I don't think you're going to get. And my opinion is like it's it's cheating. It's not it, it's it's not you being the best version of yourself. But if everyone is cheating, it's not cheating because you all have access to the same, essentially touch wood, money aside, to the same product. It wouldn't fit right with me if I was an elite athlete and an, um I wanted to see how far I could go. I'd still be like, this is this isn't something I've put the effort into. All right, here's a scenario. You have got everything you can out of your body naturally and your genetics are holding you back. Yeah. But there's something that you can take that can boost your genetics and mm. unlock almost like an X-Man. Mm. So you can do it. Would you not, not wouldn't it suck knowing that you're limited by what you're just what you're born with? Wouldn't you like to improve like have a way to improve that? Cause it, it once you've maxed out like Gattaca, I don't know if you've watched oh. the movie Gattaca. Yeah. He's limited by his genetics. Mm. You know, like wouldn't you want to know what you can do? Mate, I'm a hippie. <laughs> I, just know, I, like, I don't like fucking having Panadol, so yeah. I'm probably the wrong person to ask. But like, I'd want to see how far Brock Lesnar can throw a javelin. 
it's like, <laughs> don't you want to see that shit? Like Hulk, <laughs> like the wrestling matches. I guess WWE is already that. Like it already is sport on juice. I don't know. For me, in my head, doesn't sit right. What do you reckon, Nana? Mm. Cheating. Yeah, I don't think it's sport. I think again, it's entertainment. Yeah, mm. yeah, they're two different things. Wouldn't you feel? Wouldn't you feel deep down, like you've you've shafted yourself? I think probably you would when you reflect like that. You'd be like, oh, I didn't really do this. That's not really me. Yeah, it's almost that self limiting belief where you can attribute your success to something other than you. Mm. So it'll probably take away that feeling of I earned this. Mm. Your success is thanks to something external to you that you didn't create within. Mm. So well, that's probably true. answered my own question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what 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 sport would you want to see the most though, Juice Up? If you could watch any sport, oh yeah, what would it be? That's what, a cool question. What would be the funnest one to watch in this in this Juice Up? Or funnest one? Yeah, the X Man Olympics. We'll call it. Nah, I'd love to watch something that's like entertaining, like f- like. Ping pong or something, you know those fucking. <laughs> you see those guys when they're fucking <laughs> jumping around and shit, just on meth. Oh, on ping just pong. fucking yeah. I'm so focused right now. <laughs> but actually, have you ever watched the ping pong Bro, at the Olympics? It's so intense. I think that's my, one of my favorite things to watch. Actually, pole vault is one of my favorites. Pole vault, um, high jumps, fun. High jump is yeah. great to watch. Um, long, I uh, actually the, all the jumps. The hammer curl, the hammer throw is fucking yeah. Dope. I get a bit off the throws, javelin and stuff a little bit. I still like them, but. Uh, what if they the change it to like who control javelin through a wall? Like you slightly change the events, like throw this javelin <laughs> through a brick wall. <laughs> so like that's full map. Mina? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Or like about that jump one. this jump this razor fence. Or jump this crocodile pit. Yeah, I don't like know. Like where they one. level it up. Yeah. And there's, there's almost like hunger games. Oh hun- hunger well, hunger steroid games. Just well, look, I'm probably <laughs> tuning in. <laughs> I'm probably tuning in. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Probably, yeah. So uh, there's a couple of other sports I love watching yeah. anyway, like volleyball. Uh, why? Because uh, of the, the talent. The men's volleyball, obviously. Uh, no, just their extreme talent. You know, yeah, the, really- me- the men's volleyball, right? <laughs> That's the sport you like watching? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe just, I'm, I'm gender neutral, man. Yeah. What's your opinion on? Do you have? Are you forced to wear a certain? Um, out, what's the word for it? Not outfit. What like is it? A, yeah, like a uniform. I uniform. Guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there sexism and, and is it different expectations from guys to girls in pole vault? Because I know the beach volleyball. Yeah. It's disgusting what they make the men wear. <laughs> no. <laughs> um. Yeah. It's kind of like whoever sponsors the Olympics. Right. You wear that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. What about outside of um pole vaulting? What did you like to? Do you like were you a uh, sports chick or your beachy? <laughs> like you know how people have one focus only. Mm. You know, was there well, stuff other than pole vault that you got into? Um, probably not. Hey, like, really? Well, like That's so lucky. Normal, like normal kid yeah. played yeah. sports, loved sports. Was definitely the sporty kid in school. Was defined by that, and you kind of just keep going from there. Well, right? that's were that you actually girl every year. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> until, until he came to school. <laughs> yeah. So that actually leads me to a question. I really, I love asking athletes this yeah. and talking to athletes about it. So that it's dif- it's difficult because you're still in the prime. Yeah, you're, you're still the number one in the world. Mm. Um, so it's a little different. But what do you see yourself when you f- when you f- get to that point when you finish yeah. post pole? What drives you moving forward? Do you mm. think? Do you do you even think that far ahead? I don't. I mean, probably mm. not right now because your 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 drive would well, be to continue yeah. to be the best in the world. But you've got what, that long term goal as well. You said, mm. what age does that long term goal stop? I think when I hit it, right? Really? It could, yeah. So it's kind of like, of course, I think about what I'm going to do after. Like mm. you always hear about you know ex athletes kind of going down bad paths, and it's like, oh god, yeah. you know, that can't happen to me. So you're definitely like thinking, but I don't want to give it too much energy and thought because yeah. it really does take away from what I'm doing. Fucking so. nice, yeah, 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 yeah. Enjoy it right now. Enjoy what's happening. It's yeah. it's it's always seems to be a sp- specifically with sports. I think it's always drive and purpose. You've got an end. You've got something you're mm. working mm. towards, and when that's taken away from you, that structure, that routine, mm. people find themselves lost. Oh, and I'm so prepared to find myself like. Lost, mm. depressed, <laughs> like, <laughs> like fat, yeah. like yeah. everything. After like, China. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm just, I'm kind of prepared for that. So, 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I think when is when are we June July Olympics? Yeah, yeah, July August. When, when's um pole vault? What do you know? What, what date? Yeah, yeah, fifth and seventh of August. Really? Okay. Fuck. I'll be in Edinburgh. I want to come over. I'm gonna go over uh, end of July, fifth and seventh. So from now to the Isn't Olympics. When, when's kits? When when are we going? Uh, when are we going to Austria? Se- September. Uh, oh, wait right, a second. Two questions. This is popped in my head. Yeah. Post Olympics, mm. you're in Europe. Yeah. Are you just having a blowout and traveling, or do you go straight back to training? And B, to lead up to that, is everything managed day by day, minute by minute, hour by hour to peak on the fifth and the seventh? Oh yeah, because this is pretty intense. I've never met anyone preparing for an Olympic so close. Yeah, no. I'll start with that question. Let's just say, like, after the World Champs last year. So you know, when was it? August until the olympics every day since then i have thought about the olympic medal like without a doubt every single day so it's kind of like i feel like i'm in this weird focus zone where i have these like insane blinkers on and like that's all i'm thinking about and i know that is like very rare in life Mm. but i'm going with it do you see yourself with the gold on are you manifesting that and visualizing that of course i've said that so many times do you do that stuff i'm doing do you do like manifestation, visual, visualization? I do visualization. I think right. that is like a crazy tool that people should tap into more. But yeah, like I know what competitions I'm doing. I know mm-hmm. when I'm training. I know when I'm flying. Like it's pretty mapped out. Mm-hmm. Do you fly um, economy or business for stretching out? Um, That's not a piss take <laughs> question. This is a legitimate <laughs> question. No, it's a good question. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's a long flight. It is a long flight. Once you reach. Um, you know, once you reach like top three in the world, like meets are quite happy to awesome. pay a business class ticket. So mm. nice. I have been flying business since. <laughs> Woo, very cool. Do you get to lie down flat to yeah, sleep? Yeah, it's oh, insane. That's so good. I'm it's it's life changing oh. that travel. What, what is it? Yeah. What does it do to you being away from family and friends and and like deck? You know, mm. yeah, like quite a lot of the year. It's so like, it's so hard. Mm. Like. I, and I look. It's it's hard being away. It's 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 hard being in a country that doesn't speak English. It's hard not knowing everything around you. But it's also like the way you look at it, kind of thing. It's yeah. like it's pretty wicked. Okay, it's like the the lens you look through. It's actually really damn wicked. Like yeah. Yeah. I'm creating new friends. I'm doing this really cool thing. Like I'm living my dream life. Like just go enjoy it. Who, so who do you travel with? Is it just your coach or teammates as well? Yeah. So I have a main training partner, Curtis, who also pole vaults. Mm-hmm. We have two coaches that normally come with us. And then kind of when you're leading into an Olympics or a world championships, you're hanging out with the Australian team for that's, a few weeks before. That's pretty cool. At least you get to like share it with someone. As a traveling comic, when you're on your own, it, it gets pretty... Lonely. Like, yeah, lonely and like you're in a new city, but you're kind of like, you know, I'll go for a walk. Yeah, you know, I go look I around, do, but it's yeah. like, what do you do? Yeah, yeah. So, so that's yeah. pretty lucky that you get to travel with like-minded people as well. Do you have to? Sure. Yeah. Do you have to keep yourself from training too much? Do you be like, mm. I've got some extra time mm. because you'd be <laughs> like, no, 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 no. no. Like, sleep time. <laughs> <laughs> because I know I'd be in that situation where like I've got three or four hours to kill like some yeah. days i'd be like yeah i'm just gonna fuck i'm yeah, like, movie, guilt, yeah. like i should be doing more what should it yeah. yeah but if it's not in your training schedule you'd be like i can't do it i'm not allowed to do it yeah. do you get to the do you, is there sometimes yeah. that you go i'm just gonna go for a jog now or something like that no no, <laughs> no. what is <laughs> you it t- well, you're not that too. fucking driven <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who's mapped out your training have you got a sports scientist or is yeah, it this coach? Yeah. so we have Coaches, biomechs, um, physios, doctors are all kind of like nice. creating that. like, um, And they've got a good track record so far because for me, you put a lot of trust in what they think is best for you. Oh, for you sure. Know? But also it's like I've done this long enough now to know like what works, what doesn't. If they're trying to make me do something and I don't like it, I'm going to say no. Yeah. Mm. Give us an example of your week. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like let's start with this morning. Uh, yeah. Take away the podcast. What does it look like for you in a week of an Olympic athlete? Yeah, so um, Monday to Friday, I like to think of it as like a nine-to-five job. This is what I do. I'm paid full-time. That's kind of how I think of it. So I rock up to training around nine o'clock, so I do get to sleep in. (laughs) Um, And then you're there until like maybe... 12 o'clock, you finish your session. 12, 1 o'clock, you're doing some recovery in the ice baths and spas. You're coming home, you're eating. That's like 2 o'clock. And then in the Arvo, it's kind of like you have physio, massage, dietitian, psych, like whatever you have that day, like your meetings kind of thing. Yeah. And then 
yeah, you're just chilling in the Arvo, catching up with friends, making dinner, like hanging out with housemates. It's yeah. it's very cool. That's cruisy. pretty cool. And what? then on the weekend, it's kind of like just like a nine to five job. Like this is my downtime. Yeah. Mm. Coaches don't contact me. I'm not on my email. It's like I don't want to talk sport. That's pretty cool. That's good that you've been able to compartmentalize it and switch off as well. And it's so good. Like uh, the, the facilities that we've got here now uh, in WA, because the old Perry Lake Stadium was <laughs> fucking like an old wooden. As a little athletic, it's awesome. But <laughs> as a professional <laughs> Olympic yeah, athlete. Yeah. Uh, that was old and trashy. But the new one, uh, what is that called? What WA Athletic Stadium or yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful spot. Like I've, oh. I've been going there. I, had, I stopped actually last year but i'm going back soon uh, mm-hmm. we do little afternoon circuits there cool. um 400 runs it's oh fun. Boy. i did 2400s the other day it's fucking oh. that's it's too many that's too much <laughs> um I but you got that so but so that's great during the day beautiful like especially in the mm. sun do you train there when it's wet and pissing with rain like what did we do we have an indoor stadium yeah here? does it like, get cancelled if, if it's wet surely or no? Mm, yes and no. Like yeah, it really right. depends. So we do have like an indoor jumping facility. So in the winter months we're there and like in the summer we're out there. But like obviously the weather has been like crazy hot. So like it's just insane. Like I'll finish a session out there at like one o'clock and Ugh. just be like, mm, I yeah. have heat stroke. Yeah. <laughs> I need to go lay down. <laughs> yeah. What time is the Olympic jumps? Are you training for that time for your body to be peaking? No, so it matches the same I really time? really like... How I look at it is, like, you get the most bang for your buck in the morning. Right. Like, hormones-wise, like, energy-wise, like, you need to get your training done in the morning, personally. Yeah. Um, but, like, obviously that doesn't fit in with the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's kind of like, that's a one-off, that's fine. But all your competitions on the circuit are in the in the night, so. Right, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, how think. does it make you feel? Like, I get, does, so, IW... IAAF, the Diamond League, fucking big, big crowds there. But the Olympics will be next level, especially Mm -hmm. considering your first Olympics was empty. It was empty. There was nothing. One, what's that like? Mm. Fucking no one in an empty stadium. And then Mm. two, how are you preparing to, like, be potentially in front of, like, if it's on a night where you've got the 100 metres or the 400 metres on, Mm. you've got 100,000 people there. Like, that must be pretty – and they're all watching you in between – the no. other events yeah. as well. So Do you love that? I, I would fucking froth on that. But yeah. yeah. So Tokyo was just like dead empty. Like I said, I just wanted to forget about it. So yeah. I did. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, let's not talk about <laughs> it anymore. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the Olympics, like there's going to be every man and their dog there. So in at the World Champs last year, like similar things. So yeah. the pole vault was the only thing that was on at Sick. that time. So like no joke, every single eyeball was like, on us in our jump off and like when we made that decision it was just like insane so yeah. like in a weird way i feel like i'm prepared but also in another way it's like you're so focused on what you're doing you're not looking like yeah, yeah. you know in the crowd yeah yeah um with your diet like mm. do you have to cook for yourself do they so what's the go there like i've just tried to do keto i've got an app i'm following <laughs> 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 what's your like is are you strict on your diet? Do you are you allowed to have ice cream every now and again? Are you yeah. drinking booze? What's the go? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I definitely have gotten to a stage where it's like I found out what works for me, right? Mm. So, a lot of experimenting, a lot of growing up as a young girl and body figures being mm. quite a big issue. Social media, and it's just like I've kind of just gotten to a, a stage where it's like food. Is fuel like yeah. you were working your ass off out there for hours at a day, like at a time, like refuel yourself. So yeah. I'm very chill. Um, like I said, I eat like a lot of organic. I don't eat a lot of processed yeah. food, whole foods. Um, Smashing like massive portions or a little bit every now and again. Um, yeah, it's definitely just get that protein hit yeah. every few hours. Right. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, when you're when you're putting that much strain on your muscle, it's like okay, your body actually needs energy, carbs to you know fix it and it's also like you need that protein like every every few hours so it's like just chugging down protein yeah right Mm. um okay so post we've we've got our eye on the prize we're winning gold once we've won the gold yeah what's happening you travel in europe are you taking downtime what are we doing yeah so it will i think it'll really depend on what 
happens, but basically the Diamond League final is after the Olympics. I was about to say, isn't it? Oh, like it idiots. Because <laughs> don't they, the, especially the, like, and you'd be considered in that top yeah. bracket. Do you go to Diamond League and do a few meets prior? What's your, what's your, or do you save yourself? You have to mm. peak at the right time. Yeah. So I'm doing Diamond Leagues before and then there's two Diamond Leagues and the Diamond League final after. So there's three competitions where yeah. potentially there is a lot of money on the line. Yeah. Which, like, it's how we get paid. I was so going to say, is there a cash prize for, for It winning? used to be gold bars, hey? Oh, I don't know about Yeah, it used, used oh. to be gold bars or, di- or, di- or diamonds. Oh, wow. I think it was gold bars from so memory. Do you, do you get a cash prize for coming first? Oh, like, of course. What's That's how the, we get what's paid. The purse? So it's also like you get paid to rock up, right? So you got to like, it's an appearance fee. You yeah. rock up, you get your appearance fee, you can jump however you like. Sick. So. Who backs the diamond league? Is it is it done by a sporting or like a So it's like company? World Athletics. It's basically right. like What is the IAAF? Athletics. What does that stand for? International Athletics, Athletics Association, Association Federation. What what's the first prize? And money wise. So first, so there's twelve meets. Um, first prize is ten US. Wow, ten bucks is fucking nuts, bro. <laughs> Actually That's like fifty Australian dollars. <laughs> Wait a second, that's what I'm Maybe I'm remembering something different, but it was like a – I think it was IAAF and it was like – it was a gold bar sort of league and there'd be a certain amount of gold bars and whoever was left would win it. I need to go. Oh, wow. What it was. Yeah. yeah. That'd be sick no if you could just actually had a gold about. bar to pole vault over and the winner keeps it. Yeah, <laughs> like. it, w- it was certain events and it was um, the person who – oh, if you don't lose an event through the whole – Oh, so they just kept all the gold bars themselves unless you you don't. Bolt. Yeah, if you don't lose one event through the 12 meets or whatever it was, yeah. you got a gold bar at the end uh, of it. That's pretty cool. I can't remember. I clearly don't do that anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I've never heard that, but there you go. So post, you're going to you do that final, the diamond? Um, yeah, it'll really depend. I think um, there's like a three-week gap between the Olympics finishing and my Ooh. next competition. So it's like... I might come home like that's the thing if I win it's like come home like soak it up like because yeah. the diamonds will be there forever but the Olympics you know it won't be once every four years but you'll win this year and in four years time so I mean <laughs> you do get to experience mm. it both which is pretty sick mm. Is uh, does Declan come over with you? Has your family got tickets this time or what? Yeah, my family. <laughs> and you're locked in. <laughs> well, wait a second. <laughs> and I'm locked in. Sorry, and crazy. And Dex coming because that'll be after footy season, right? Oh, no, it's no. Right? And he, he's, oh, isn't August. He, isn't oh, he, beforehand. Isn't he captain? He is captain, but his girlfriend's going. To <laughs> 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 Woo! Suck shit, Claremont. Yeah. Sorry. Fuck, <laughs> yeah. oh, poor lads. Um, oh, but, that's sick. Uh, yeah, fuck. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, final thing I want to chat about yep. is um, you're obviously number one in the world, successful, mm. you're a woman. So mm. there must – and you sort of touched on it before, that pull for, for young women becoming athletes is starting mm. to grow. But uh, what what would you say to, I guess, young female athletes that really want to push to strive to be the best in the world at something yeah. and um, and continue to grow? Yeah. Oh, God, you put me on the spot. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but you're definitely right. Like, it's especially with the AFLW, like, there's just, there's girls getting paid now for yeah. sport, which, like, five years ago, ten years ago, that wasn't even a thing. So, like, for me, that is just, like, insane. And I think I'm just, like, you know, especially the, with the Tillies winning, like, that whole thing in Melbourne and then or in Australia and then me kind of doing that. And, again, the Tillies are back on. Like, it's just kind of creating this movement, which... I think is like insane. So, yeah. what about pressures? So, I used to be a high school teacher for ten years. Yeah, most common thing you get: girls with notes not wanting to do sport. Mm. What do you say? Like, if we can look down the camera, because <laughs> oh, like, is it peer pressure? It's it wasn't considered cool back when we we're at school, especially mm. for girls yeah. to try or to do sport. How do you get around that? I think that's definitely changing. Like, you're seeing a lot of, like, run clubs and Pilates and, like, everyone's just, like, keeping fit and, like, getting involved. And I think that's, like, the most important thing, right? Mm. So I think I'd say, like, even if you don't enjoy it, just do something that you – like. if you don't want to do it. Like, do something that you find fun. Like, do it with your friends. Like, go for a walk. Like, as long as you're enjoying it, then, like, I think that's the main thing. And I think, like, we're seeing, like, so much evidence of, like – healthy lifestyle and like exercise it's just so beneficial so yeah. like just get out and do it yeah mm. yep stop handing the notes into the teachers 
<laughs> we, we want you to we want you to succeed you can't succeed sitting on your butt fuck yeah well you're an absolute inspiration um yeah really good chat good mindset fuck yeah yeah Been really good to get to know you i do love hearing those stories of people who have, it was a mindset change mm. that um and seeing people seeing people like courtney dewalter and that, that's ultra runners and stuff mm. who are you know the best in the world even amongst men like that, that insane. It's insane to see that sometimes it's just a mindset change, and mm. fucking glad you came on to talk about that. So, is there anything you want to plug yeah. uh, coming up? You know, Olympics, Olympics. <laughs> Do you want to plug the Olympics? Yeah. It's actually funny. I had an interview the other day, but I won't name the person. But they were like. Oh, do you have anything big coming up? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, are you even serious? Yeah. <laughs> Claremont round one is soon. <laughs> <laughs> the waffle season opener. <laughs> oh, no. Insane. Uh, yeah, so any, if anything. We, yeah, if we want to support you, what's the best way? Uh, follow yeah. you on Insta, yeah. socials, donate. Yeah, no, no, no. Just follow me on Insta. Um, I'll be posting, you know, all my results, Olympic kind of journey up until then. And so, what's, yeah. what is it at pole position? What what's is your it? <laughs> what's my um, – Nina Kennedy underscore. Nice. Was yeah. Underscore. Yeah, was Nina Kennedy already taken? Yeah, it was. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe the underscore is just the, the pole vault yeah. run. Yeah, yeah. potentially. Like, um, yeah, oh, fuck. The, 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 the pole. Oh, yeah, when you win gold – yeah. You're going to have so many opportunities um, come your way. Are you going to be picky with who who you choose to sponsor you? Or are you just going to be like, give me all your offers? Are, are you going to do TV? Like this excites me. Like you go on, have you been paying attention? Or you go on these TV tours once you've got gold? Are you going to do any of that? Or just win the gold first and deal um, with it later? I definitely felt like after the world champs, like things started to like crop yeah. up. So I like, I went on, have you been paying attention? And I, like, I did I a few, yeah. like a few other things, which was like really fun, but... Yeah, I'm definitely doing this because I love sport. Yeah. I'm not doing it to yeah. be in the media. Which <laughs> I, I want you to put in a word for me for having been paying attention. That's, <laughs> that's my dream goal. I want to Which be on there. We're very appreciative. Yeah, you very much. On. So you and, can go uh, have a nap now. It's uh, it's kind of <laughs> cool, uh, especially when a when a Perth local mm. athlete is. Number one in the world, and uh, or just just doing great things. It's, yeah, it's always good. It's really to awesome. Connect and uh, get you out there. So, Delby, you got anything to plug? Yeah, August fifth and seventh, we'll be watching the pole vault um, championships and the Olympics. Perfect. That's all that I want to plug right now because I'm I'm on board. Oh, sick. Yeah. Um, oh, um, personal one. Oh, I made the raw final. Woo! Yep. Hell yeah, raw comedy final. I'm not. Going to do it though because yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be in Thailand. But um, I still made it. So yeah. pretty congrats. pumped. I'm pretty pumped about that. Delby gave me a nice shout out. So thanks very much. Um, and then so good luck to all the other comedians doing that. Um, on the 9th. Uh, yeah, 9th of March. Um, aside from that, anything else we want to plug? Patreon. Yeah, we'll do that at the start. Yeah, we'll do that at the start. But cool. Sick. Thank you Thank so you. much. That's Fucking okay. awesome episode. Yeah, and having really me. good. I'm really excited, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sick. Yeah. I feel real like a good, good, good buzz. Good vibes. Sick. Could be the um, the drugs I had before. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. All right. All right.